Yes, yes, yes. And it's DJ Cool Hell once again on Bajan Live. And today I'm coming to you to talk about something very dear and important to me. And that is the independence of the island of Barbados in the Caribbean. And Barbados has a very colorful history. And it was... It was um, occupied by many different types of people. And the first people to occupy it was the Amer Indians, who came from Venezuela on little canoes. And they first inhabited it. They were very short. And they, they were farmers. They, they, play, they grew cotton, cassava, corn, peanuts, guavas, papas. You name it. You know, they came with, they were also fish a lot. They fish for food. They used harpoons and nets and hooks. Now, Barbados is the easternmost island in the Caribbean and it's located 13.1 north, 59.4 west. The island is actually less than a million years old and it was created by an Atlantic crustal and Caribbean plates that collided along with a volcanic eruption and accumulating approximately 300 feet. It's geologically unique, but actually it's two land masses that merge together. Um, the first indigenous Indians who arrived from Venezuela, you know, they took narrow canoes through a dangerous flowing water to the closest nearest island Trinidad and they kept going flowing cross currents and it was very dangerous for them to do that it was an open dugout canoe and it, they, they arrived at families and villages and just set up a civilization in, in, in Barbados now that's not the only thing in 1200 the Arawaks were conquered by the Caribs they were bigger, and taller, and stronger Amerindian tribes. They were incredibly accurate bowmen. They used a bow and used a powerful poison to paralyze their prayer. The culture has almost vanished from the island. Pockets of the culture and the people now known as Kalinga, what? Um, known as Kalingano exist in St. Vincent, Grenadines, and Dominica. Now the Portuguese came to Barbados en route to Brazil. It was at a time that the island was named Los Barbados, bearded one, by the Portuguese explorer Pedro A. Campos. It was also named presumably after the island's fig trees, which have a beard like appearance. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. The first English touched down on the island in May 14, 1625, under the command of Captain John Powell. The island was therefore claimed on the behalf of King James. And on February 17, 1627, Captain Powell landed with a party of 80 settlers, 10 slaves, to occupy and settle the uh, island. The expedition landed in formerly a whole town formerly known as Jamestown. The colonists established a House of Assembly in 1639. It was the third ever parliamentary democracy in the world. So Barbados democracy dates back a long ways. People with good financial background and social connections with England were allocated land. Within a few years, much of the island had been deforested to make way for tobacco and cotton. Now that's one of the things people don't know. People thought Barbados was strictly sugarcane in the beginning, but nope. Tobacco and cotton. During the 1630s, sugarcane was introduced to agriculture. The production of sugarcane, tobacco, and cotton was heavily reliant on indentured servants, white civilians who wanted to migrate overseas and could not do so and could do so by signing an agreement <laughs> to serve have a planter in Barbados for a period of five to seven years. So 
the, the first people to do the labor in Barbados were indentured servants who had to sign a contract and then they owed money and they had to work it off. To meet the labor demands, servants were also derived from kidnapping and convicted criminals, criminals who were shipped to Barbados, descendants <clears throat> of white slave and indentured labor referred to as red legs, still live in Barbados. They live, uh, they live amongst the black population in St. Martin's River and other East Coast regions. At one time, they lived in caves in the region. A potential market formed for slave and sugar-making machinery by Dutch merchants who were to supply Barbados with their requirements of forced labor from West Africa. The slave came from Sierra Leone, Guinea, Ghana, and Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and Cameroon. Many slaves did not survive the journey, but many thousands still reached their destination. The Barbadians dominated the Caribbean sugar industry in these years. The sugar plantation owners were very powerful and successful people. Still to this day, there's a lot of plantations still up and successful businessmen who had arrived in Barbados in the early years. Many natural disasters occurred in the 1600s, such as <clears throat> the locust plague of 1663, the Bracedown Fire, and a major hurricane in 1667. Drought in 1668 ruined the planters, and excessive rains in 1669 added a financial problem. However, investment continued in sugar and slave, and was perceived to be good prospects. So Barbados, just like any other place in the world, had black people that worked for no money and still never got paid. By 1720, Barbadians no longer a dominant force in the sugar industry. They had been surpassed by the Leeward Islands and the Jamaica. After slavery was abolished in 1834, many of the new citizens of Barbados took advantage of the superb education, which they still have to this day, available on the island. After these citizens had been educated, they wanted something more than just working on the cane fields. So some of them gained prominent office in Barbados, others worked on common jobs, and still at a state in the field of Barbados. Many people were drawn to Barbados because of the climate and the slow pace of life. And the pace of life, pace of life is still slow in Barbados, believe it or not. The island was thought to be a cure for the vapors. Even Major George Washington visited the island with tuberculosis stricken half brother in hope of, you know, getting rid of his illness. Slavery abolished in 1834 followed a four-year apprenticeship period in which free men continued to work a 45-hour per week without pay in exchange for their living in tiny huts provided by the plantation owners. Freedom from slavery was celebrated in 1838 at the end of the apprenticeship period with over 70,000 Barbadians of African descendants <coughs> Excuse me, taken to the streets with the Barbados folk song. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. Lick and lock up done. With uh, I'm not even gonna try to do it. I'll have to find it and play. I'm not gonna try to do it, but you know the people took to the streets to celebrate, you know, slavery. Celebrate the end of slavery after the apprenticeship. Barbados was occupied by the British in 1627 and remained a British colony until internal autonomy was granted in 1961. The island gained full independence in 1966 and maintains ties to the British monarchy represented in Barbados by a governor general. It was a member of the Commonwealth. The first leader of Barbados Free Nation was the Right Honorable Errol Barrow. I remember him. I remember him because of people, and he was of the Democratic Labor Party. People used to always argue during political times. In Barbados, it was an exciting time. It was almost like Super Bowl when I was growing up because I remember my parents having people over, big arguments, and it, it was just like Super Bowl. It was kind of funny to watch, but that's how I got my pride, and that's how I, why I vote. And to this day, I still think the political process is one of the most important things in the world. 
The other major political party in Barbados is the Barbados Labour Party, led by by current Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Orrin Arthur, who is not really the Prime Minister now. He died from cancer a couple of years back. National Democratic Party was formed. Its leader was Dr. Richie Haynes. I remember him too also. So, to sum it up, Barbados has a very colorful history. Um, we had our slavery like everybody else. You know, we had the Slave Rebellion. We have a guy, Buster Mente, if anybody want to want to look him up. He led a lot of the Slave Rebellion. He was a Africa... He was an African from a place as a statue of him in Barbados, and he was a great leader, and he fought in the rebel in the in the slave rebellion. But in Barbados, got their independence. Um, we have the coat of arms represents pride in industry. We take great pride in our island. We take great pride in our history, and we have one of the highest literacy rate in the world. We take pride in all these things and. If any of you listeners listening to me get, ever get a chance, if you get a chance, November 30th, I already, although I already heard Barbados is booked up, I'm very busy at this time. It'll be hard to get in that time. Get down there and enjoy the celebration and be a part of it because I'm very proud to be a Bajan. So for now, that'll be all now. See you next time. Gunshot on that.